Hello, this is Dampro. I'm going to hopefully do a quick tutorial. I always try to make them quick, but they never seem to be quick. I'm going to make a quick tutorial to help a forum member at uh, BlenderArtist.org with a claw rig. So um, the member actually wanted to be able to move um, this collar up and down and then have this uh, uh, claw open and shut. So I'm assuming it's kind of like one of those um, toy grabber type of claws. So I'm going to set up a rig and show you how to... Um, figure this out. Now I've actually went through and done some mesh preparation and I'm not going to go through that here just to try to keep this a little bit shorter. I'm just going to kind of explain what I did. Now in front orthographic view and you can type um, 3 to go to right orthographic or 1 to go to front orthographic. I've actually set up our meshes so everything is right and left when you're looking at it in front orthographic view and what that um, is really going to help with is um, it's going to give us access to using the X mirror tools in Blender, so you, um, the original file actually had everything in front orthographic view, everything was sideways like this, so I've actually turned everything around, I've um, selected all of our meshes that make up this claw, and there's um, a few of them, and did we did Alt-P, Clear Parent, Keep Transformation, because I want them to all stay exactly where they are, uh, in this default um, spot here, and I've actually centered everything in the scene here, right on this X axis right here, again in front orthographic view, uh, made sure everything was unparented, and uh, the original author actually also was um, kind of mixing and matching um, object constraints, and when you're using an armature, you will want to um, actually parent these um, meshes to bones within an armature, and then you use bone constraints. You do not want to use um, the object constraints here. So um, bone constraints actually aren't showing up on this panel right now because I don't have an armature selected, but it will be a chain and a bone icon instead. So uh, in order to get rid of those, I just selected all those mesh objects and went to Object, Constraints, Clear Object Constraints. That way you don't have to select each one and hand um, delete them all. So I did that, and then uh, like every other project, I select everything and make sure that all of my transform for my objects are applied. So Control A, apply the location, rotation, and scale for each of these objects, and that puts the center, uh, their object um, on, uh, origins down here at the center of the world, which you might think is a bad thing when you're trying to rig mechanical objects, but we're going to parent each one of these meshes to a bone, and the bone's rotation point. That's what's going to be the important part. So I do this because um, it's uh, it helps with, in case I need to unparent things, it's got a default location here. So I like the way this looks right now. It's in a closed default spot, and I want to make sure all those meshes are going to stay there um, without... And I've actually explained this uh, quite a few times in other tutorials, so I'll try not to blabber on about why. So uh, just trust me, it's a good thing to do, um, but it's not always necessary. And I'll leave it at that. All right, let's get in here and do Shift-A. Add our armature single bone. When my cursor is at the center of the scene. That's going to put that armature at the center of the scene. I'm going to, with the armature selected, actually, let's just change the name of it. Let's call this Claw Rig. So we've got our Claw Rig armature. Let's go to Edit Mode, and that's going to go to Edit Mode. We go to Side View here. With this first bone selected. Let's name this to Root. I always like to have a root bone. With the top selected, RX negative 90. I'm going to lay this bone down flat. I'm going to go to armature panel here and turn on axis display and also x-ray display. So when I start adding bones up into these meshes here, I can um, see these um, bones through that mesh if I move that up there. I'll be able to see that through. Let me just take the end here, G, Y, and just drag this out and just make it a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to see. So now we've got a root bone. I actually have a tutorial on what the importance of a root bone in my Rigify tutorial series, so I'm not going to go through the importance of that right now. Um, but trust me, you'll always want to have an, uh, a root bone in your rig, and everything is basically going to be built up from that. So first thing I want to do is I want to add a bone up here. It's going to be kind of like the main claw rig, so when I move that and rotate it around, everything is going to go with it. So I'm actually going to use the mesh itself. I'm going to select this piston head.001 and uh, select this top ring here, shift S, cursor to selected, and that puts that cursor right at the center of that selection. Now I can go out of edit mode of that mesh, reselect my armature, go back into edit mode of the armature, and do shift A. It's going to add a new bone with the head of that bone right at um, uh, that 3D cursor. So I'm going to go back to side view here, and with the top selected, RX, negative 90, 
uh, lay this down flat. And the reason I'm laying these down flat is so the axes of the bones are aligned with the axes of the world. And that's just a good thing to do whenever you're in doubt. Um, align the axis of the bone with the axis of the world because that's just going to make sense for your animator. So I won't get into that too much as well. But let's rename this bone. Instead of bone, we'll call this claw main. And I want to parent this claw main bone to my root bone. So again, we're building our hierarchy up here. Our root bone is always going to be the rootmost bone of that hierarchy. So this will be a child of it. Select the child first. Shift. Select the parent. Control P. Make parent with keep offset. Now let me go back to pose mode of my armature. I have this claw main bone here. I'm going to select the piston head mesh, shift select the claw main bone, control P, set parent to the bone. So basically I just parented this mesh directly to this bone. Now when I move that, it's going to move uh, with that bone and it's going to rotate relative to however I've set this bone up. So there we go. Now I actually don't need to uh, this is good for location, and I'm going to need it for rotation, but I don't need to scale this, so I'm actually going to lock these uh, scale axes on this. Next up, I'm going to need a way to move this um, collar mesh up and down, so I'm going to add a bone uh, for that. I'm going to go into edit mode of this mesh, select these rings here, shift S, cursor to selected. That puts the cursor right at the center of that selection. Again, go back to my armature and edit mode. Now I tab back and forth from pose mode to edit mode quite often. If I'm in edit mode, I, uh, the bones will be orange, and if I'm in pose mode, they will be blue. So in case I forget to say, um, that's what I'm uh, doing here. You need to add bones in edit mode. So shift A, it's always going to add that bone wherever your 3D cursor is, the head of that bone. Again, side view, let's do R, X, negative 90. I'm gonna, again, lay that bone down flat. This will be my collar bone name it collar. I need to parent that to my main claw main bone. Keep offset. Now I can parent my collar mesh to that. Control P. Set parent to bone. Now for this bone, I only want it to move up and down on its local Z axis. So you can see this bone is the Z axis is pointing up and down. So I only want it to move uh, in that direction. So I'm going to um, actually lock the transforms in X and Y and I don't need to rotate this at all so I'm going to lock all the rotation axes and I'm also don't need to scale this individually I'm going to lock the scale as well so now when I move the piston claw bone and then I just move this up and down now I need to automate the rest of this here and I'm going to do that with an IK constraint so whenever you're doing mechanical type objects you always want to find your rotation points so I've got two rotation points on uh, this, so for this connecting rod right here, and then there's a rotation point on the claw and a rotation point at the head here as well. So I'm going to extend a bone from here down to there and then from there over here. And I'm going to use an IK constraint um, to make this auto rotate here. So I'm going to go into edit mode of this uh, connecting rod, select this center um, ring right there, shift S, cursor to selected. This is just a very accurate way to add bones. Again, back to my armature, shift A. Now the head of that bone is where I want it, but I want to put the tail down here. So I'm going to go back. A lot of mode switching here and a lot of object switching, but uh, I want to get this ring, shift S, cursor to selected. Now I can go back to my armature, select the top, shift S, selection to cursor. Now the head of the bone is where I want it, and the tail of the bone is where I want it. I want to parent this uh, bone here. Let's call this... This is going to be the first part of my IK chain, mch.ik.001. I'm going to parent that to my collarbone, control P, keep offset. And the reason I'm pairing it to the collarbone is so whenever I move this up and down, this rotation point is always going to move with it. Let me go back to edit mode here in side view. I want to actually roll this bone here. So with the bone selected, mch.ik.001, control R, I want to point this so... The x-axis is pointing straight this way. Now this is actually a little bit of a weird thing for Blender. It's actually showing the axes on the tail end of the bone and like I mentioned the important of the bone is the head up here. So that's where it's going to rotate from. So sometimes you need to imagine these axes up here when you're uh, uh, aligning these bones. It's it's a little weird but uh, I don't know why they do it that way but uh, that's the way it is. Anyways I'm going to extend a new bone from mchik.001 so select the tail 
E to extrude and then GX I'm going to drag one over here and I want to point it right at the center of this pin here and I know because everything is white it might be a little bit hard to see so I'm going to select that pin select all the vertices in there shift A or whoop, shift S excuse me cursor to selected now I can go back to my armature and take this tail end shift S select the cursor and it will snap it over there so again a very accurate way when you're doing mechanical objects and you also notice because I used whoops mchik.001 when I extruded that bone from there it named it automatically mchik.002 so it just incremented uh, it up automatically so now I'm going to use one more bone I need an IK target so I'm going to select the tail E to extrude and then GZ I'm just going to drag one down a little bit this is going to be mchik instead of 003 I'm just going to call it target and I want to parent my target bone to my claw main bone. So control P, keep offset. Now, when you're using an IK constraint, your target bone cannot be parented to either bone in which the IK constraint uh, is affecting. So uh, it'll start flipping out, and it's uh, something that people run into all the time. So I actually want this target to always stay relative to this. You'll actually notice that it's this is all one piece. But I just need this as the target point so that's why I added it there so let's select our IK target shift select the last bone mchik.002 in the chain that I want to add the IK constraint to shift I do control shift C and that will add constraints with targets and this is kind of a shortcut here I'm going to select inverse kinematics and that adds an inverse kinematics to the last bone in the chain I'm going to go to bone constraints here and basically what that shortcut does was that auto filled in that I'm using uh, I'm targeting the claw rig armature and the MCH IK target bone uh, is our target um, it's just auto fills that in so you don't have to manually select that so just a little bit of a shortcut I want to change my chain length to two because I only want these two bones to rotate automatically if I just move this up and down now you'll notice I'm going to get uh, what I want here I only just need to parent our control rod to that first mchik.002 control p directly to the bone and i need to parent our jaw to this bone which is mchik.002 control p bone and then there's one more mesh here this pin i'm actually going to parent that to the ik target control p bone and now we have a working claw at least one side of it so now let's get the other side for free. I'm going to select our MCH IK target and 001 and 002. In edit mode, I want to have them selected and go to armature. I'm going to auto name left and right. And the reason I didn't uh, name them automatically is I wanted to make sure all my parenting was done, all my constraints were already done. And uh, this just updates that automatically here. Now, you'll notice that it appended .l to everything. Those three bones that I had selected and now that I have dot L selected because they're on the left side of my screen I can go uh, reselect them and then go back to armature symmetrize and it's going to automatically make our right side mchik target dot R ik 002 dot R and 001 dot R and you'll notice that the parenting uh, is still because this one is parented um, to our collarbone. This one is also parented to the collarbone because our IK target was parented to uh, the claw main. Um, it is also parented to the claw main and our IK constraint, you know, it's pointing to the right target. It's just dot R instead of dot R or dot L. So very quick way to uh, only have to do one side of your rigs. Now I just need to parent this mesh to the proper bones. So let's just work our way down here. Our piston here our connection rod needs to be parented to this first IK bone on the right side control P bone our um, jaw here needs to be parented to this one control P bone and our see this little ring right there to this one IK target and there we go we have a working uh, claw now there's something we can happen because we can pull this um, collarbone out of position to flip that out we actually don't want to do that so let's add a limit location constraint so when it's zeroed out it's completely shut then we need to figure out how far up we want to um, drag this before it starts intersecting so it looks like about 
point uh, or one so let's just clear that out select our collarbone and go to our bone constraints panel and you'll see the, that's what I was talking about before here's our object constraints and you actually get an error go to bone constraints bone constraints panel add bone constraints limit location we want to limit the local location of our collarbone and we don't want it to move in X don't want it to move in Y we only want it to go from Z0 to 1.0 so we'll minimum of 0 and maximum of 1.0 and we always like to click tra for transform um, for this let me show you what happens if it doesn't so if I drag this up it's actually going to stop at 1 you'll notice up here in our transforms I'm still dragging it it's still recording that if you click transform now it'll positively lock and it won't keep dragging it up that value so almost always you'll want to use this for transform uh, checkbox so there we go now we can do a few more things here for cleanup we actually don't need to um, the animator never has to touch these MCH bones here so we can lock all their transforms and we do this really quickly I'm going to select all of these MCH bones and since I locked this one I'm going to use the copy attributes add-on here. You can uh, enable that in, uh, it comes standard with Blender, so you can find that. And enable that, and when you do Control c you get the copy attributes menu. I can copy protected transforms, because I had all these locked, now all the rest of these are the transforms are locked as well, because we don't want our animator grabbing these, rotating them, or scaling them. So, something else we can do is take our MCH bones, type M on our uh, keypad and move those to a separate bone layer here so we can uh, keep them hidden so here are the bones that an animator actually needs to use the root bone which is your main control bone main scaling main rotation for your whole rig and we have our uh, main claw bone so we can move our claw anywhere relative to that uh, main bone we can also rotate it we locked a scale axis so we're not going to scale with this and then this one everything is locked except for moving it up and down on its Z, local Z axis. And you'll notice that you can make this really tiny and everything's still gonna work properly. Still goes from zero to one. Animators always animate in local space. So if you understand that concept, you'll understand why all this works like this. Anyways, I don't wanna make a very super long tutorial, but I did wanna show uh, how you could use um, an IK constraint to make uh, this claw and the, like, I, like I mentioned this is for a forum member at um, blunderartist.org and this was the um, the way they wanted to control it by moving um, this uh, collar up and down they wanted everything else to move automatically so that was how would I do, do that if that was my goal I hope this, these tips help I hope you can see how important IK constraints are um, I don't have a bunch of time to go through all the nitty-gritty other parts but uh, uh, good luck